As you may have heard, England and Bulgaria recently played a football match during which a small number of Bulgarian fans made monkey chants against the black players playing for England. Incredible as it may seem, these chants, done by just a few dozen young Bulgarian men, provoked an international incident. With the game being suspended twice, and the head of the Bulgarian National Football Union being forced to resign after an intervention by the president. There have now been several arrests, and in this febrile climate of virtue signalling, I really wouldn't want to be those guys right now. The coverage on the BBC and all other globalist media was, of course, hysterical and overblown. The intention being to use this ridiculous and tiny incident as a teaching moment to all white people to love and never question diversity. The whole thing felt like it was intended to happen, with the England team saying days before the match that they would walk off if there were any such chanting. Well, at that point, how could it not happen? With all the build-up and subsequent overreaction, this has the air of an engineered crisis. And for that reason, I was prepared to let it pass without comment. But my mind was instantly changed a couple of days later when I saw another article on the BBC about another international football match, this time about what the Turkish team had done in France. This second article brought the issues I've been feeling about football for a long time into sharp focus, so I had to have my say. This article is about the Turkish team giving their supporters military salutes in recognition of their country's ongoing military attack on the Kurds in northern Syria. The difference between these two stories illustrates so much about the state of the West and the differences between us and the ethnic groups that are moving into our lands. A few monkey chants at black players playing for England and it's a tragic day for humanity. But if Turkey's ethnically homogenous team celebrates the mass slaughter of Kurds with its ethnically homogenous fans, the BBC says that they are embracing the nationalist mood. Let this be a lesson to you in the power of homogenous group identity and why it is these ethnic groups, with their strong sense of identity, are trampling all over us in our own countries while fiercely preserving their own. If you're weak, like the multicultural West, you get treated as such. If you're strong and unified, like Turkey, you get respect no matter what you do, even from the BBC. You may find Turkey's government repulsive. You may consider the nation a menace to our people. But what you cannot argue is that their ethnic homogeneity gives them a clear sense of national purpose and ensures their survival as a nation. They colonise us without being colonised themselves. I envy them that. The behaviour of the Bulgarian fans last week does nothing to help the nationalist cause. It allows our enemies to characterise us as morons. It makes nationalism look ridiculous and primitive, when all we want is a homeland for the peoples of Europe, just like every other people has. But this incident has been blown utterly out of proportion to make a point. And that point is, no dissent from diversity will be tolerated. If you question diversity, you are just another thug. The whole episode made me think about the role of sport in today's divided, multicultural West. England's football team and the other athletes competing for our country are disproportionately non-white. Raheem Sterling, a black player who scored twice for England against Bulgaria, wasn't even born in England. He's Jamaican. After my awakening to nationalism, I feel no pride or affinity when someone not of my ethnic group claims to represent my nation. It's a lie. And we all know it's a lie. If anyone can be English simply by getting the right passport, then English or any other nationality has ceased to have any meaning. As Trevor Noah said when France won the last World Cup, Africa won the World Cup. And he's right, it did. I don't want Africa winning any World Cups for England. I'd rather support Bulgaria. During the England match, the English commentator said that the Bulgarian fans could do with a more diverse team to give them a more enlightened way of thinking. Yes, I thought, maybe when their team looks nothing like them, nothing like the nation it claims to represent, 
Or maybe when the nation itself has been made into a minority, maybe then they'll realise just how lucky England is to have all that diversity. Maybe one day Bulgaria's team might look like France's. Maybe one day Africa can win a World Cup for Bulgaria too. And of course, so-called diversity is all one-way traffic. If a country's team is all white, it is openly attacked for that reason. If that same country's team becomes majority non-white, as France's has been for many years now, or even completely non-white, no one can question it. No one is supposed to see race at that point. It's time to abandon your illusions and accept the truth of the anti-white agenda. But I'm afraid many of us are celebrating our demise through diversity. I want you to look at this English father and son's reaction to the events in Bulgaria. Right guys, usually we'd be sitting down the day after a game, uh, discussing the football, and discussing how good Raheem Sterling was, and some of the England players. But we have to address something much, much worse that occurred during the game. I mean, we came to Sofia to see a game of football. We came to see a beautiful city, to learn something about the, about the culture and about the people. But sadly, we're left very saddened by what we've witnessed. So I think it's best we uh, share some of the things that we've seen over the last few days and what we've experienced here in Bulgaria. Yeah. We experienced some stickers there that I never thought, I never thought was a thing. I didn't think, I genuinely didn't believe that fans we put them stickers on. Yeah. And the fact that no one had taken them off. Yes. Just and shows how ridiculous it is. And what we're doing right now is we're going to put an example of four of these stickers on, on the, the screen. screen. Respect racism. Are you kidding me? Ugh, it's yeah. just, not only are they racist though, Dad, yeah. but they're also sexist. Yeah. We found a thank you for not mixing with a black male character and a white female character. Which basically saying black people should not be marrying white people. A quite disgusting sure. sticker. Sure. Just look at their faces, contorted with righteous anger as they clamour to denounce the heresy of nationalism. How dare anyone question miscegenation? How dare whites want to preserve themselves? The absolute state of our people. White eradication is now the name of the game in the West, and football is just another manifestation of that. It's anti-white hatred posing as enlightened thinking, and so many of our people are still under the spell though we as nationalists are breaking that conditioning. And it's not just football. National sport has become a joke. It has come to represent the insoluble contradictions and emptiness of multiculturalism. The message that lies at the centre of this way of thinking, of course, is that we Europeans are somehow not enough. We should celebrate diversity, and the more diverse we become, the more we should celebrate. It leaves me wondering who'll be celebrating after we've gone completely. I think we all know the answer to that one. Football at the highest level in England has never been more non-white. The sports heroes our children now have, their masculine role models increasingly do not look like them, speak like them, think like them or believe like them. But when England actually were good enough to win a World Cup, they looked a lot different to the team of today. They actually looked, and were, English. You will only find this confusion in white countries, because only white countries have been targeted for eradication, so far. Go to China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Togo, India. You will find no such confusion about who was a national there. You will find no national hand-wringing about football chants. They have no need to wrestle with such absurd questions about their identity, because like the West just 30 years ago, the host population are dominant in their own homeland. It is said that you never know what you had until it's gone. How true that is. Until next time, be well. <laughs>